Our next item is a film about Monica. By the way, the commentary was spoken by John Snag, a well-known wartime BBC voice. Since the safety of an air crew may depend on the detection of attacking enemy fighters, some bombers are fitted with a radar early warning device. This equipment is called Monica. Here, the aerial system is being fitted on the tail of a Lancaster. The equipment is designed for use at night and under conditions of bad visibility and gives the wireless operator a visual indication of the presence of all other aircraft in the vicinity. The range of detection is made greatest for positions behind the bomber as attacks are most likely to be made from this direction. In this film, details are shown of the Mark III C installation in a Lancaster. The equipment is completely self-contained and consists of transmitter, receiver, indicating unit, navigator's control panel, and aerial system. The transmitting aerial is a folded dipole mounted horizontally on the tail of the aircraft. The receiving aerials consist of a quarter wave rod and reflector, one assembly mounted horizontally on each rudder fin. The method used for detecting the presence of other aircraft follows the normal radar principle of sending out pulses of RF energy and receiving the return echoes which are displayed as deflections on a CRT time base. The transmitting aerial has a wide polar diagram and illuminates a region to the rear of the aircraft extending well above and below the line of flight and having some coverage on either beam. The receiving aerials have polar diagrams consisting of wide lobes lying to one side or the other of the line of flight. The signals from the receiving aerials are fed alternately through the receiver to the deflector plates of the cathode ray tube in the indicator. Thus, on the time base, signals from the starboard aerial produce deflections to the right and signals from the port aerial produce deflections to the left. The ratio of these deflections gives a rough indication of the bearing of the target aircraft. The time taken for a pulse to travel out to the target and be reflected back is proportional to the range. This distance is represented on the indicator by the position of the blip along the CRT time base. The CRT screen is marked with two scales. From zero to 3,000 yards on the left and from zero to 9,000 yards on the right. The scale to be used is selected by turning the time base switch. The long range scale may be used for normal watch but the short-range scale must be used for aircraft closing below 2,000 yards and during combat maneuvers. The radar pulses will also be reflected by the ground below the aircraft. Ground returns will therefore appear on the time base at a range equal to the height of the aircraft. In this case, at 2,500 yards. Since at usual operational heights, it is impossible to see aircraft echoes through the ground returns, the effective maximum range of the equipment is limited to the actual altitude of the Monica aircraft. The signals picked up by the port and starboard receiving aerials will vary with the position of the target aircraft and an approximate indication of bearing is given by the ratio of the left and right blips on the time base. If the target is dead astern, the signals in the receiving aerials are equal, giving equal blips on the time base. For positions on the starboard beam, the blip is displaced to the right. At dead ahead, the signals are equal again. And for positions on the port beam, the blip is displaced to the left. 
The bearing of a target can only be judged by experience and with an accuracy of about 10 degrees. The Monaco equipment does not distinguish between aircraft ahead and astern. In general, blips from targets ahead will first appear on the time base at shorter ranges than those from targets astern. Here, the blip ratio indicates a target on the port beam. To check the position of the target, the aircraft makes a turn to port. If, as in this case, the target is ahead, the blip tends to centralize. If, however, the target is astern, as the aircraft turns to port, the blip moves further off center. Thus, the Monica equipment gives the ranges of other aircraft in the vicinity and an indication of their bearings ahead or astern. The only controls that may require adjustment by the wireless operator are those on the indicator. The brilliance and focus controls are adjusted to give a well-defined trace of suitable brightness. The gain control is set to a suitable working level when echo should appear as deflections to left and right of the vertical time base. The time base switch is used to select the short or long range scale as required. Since echoes from targets at short range will be much stronger than those from more distant aircraft, a special gain control circuit, known as the swept gain, is included in the receiver. This decreases the gain of the receiver by an amount inversely proportional to the range. Thus, near echoes do not saturate the receiver and cause weaker, more distant echoes to be missed. The maximum range of the equipment will vary with individual installation. In general, targets astern will be picked up at about 3,000 yards, and targets on either beam at about 1,000 yards. The wireless operator should keep as continuous a watch as possible, and whenever a target comes within about 2,000 yards, he should give its approximate bearing and range to the pilot and gunners. With practice and close cooperation between the wireless operator and the air crew, visual moniker can be of invaluable assistance. of July 1944, a red letter day for TRE.